This isn't technically executing over the scalable link interface or SLI as there's no SLI bridge here. The GTX 1060s do not have SLI fingers. So that means we can't connect them via the NVIDIA bridge. Instead, we're using the PCIe bus, which is exposed through MDA or LDA explicit accessible in Ashes of the Singularity with DirectX 12. This is not something that will work on every game, but just as a bit of fun, I decided to run it through the test. Before getting to this benchmark, this video is brought to you by MSI and their new MSI GTX 1060 Gaming X video card, which is one of the two that we use in this video. So let me be clear up front, in no way would we recommend buying two GTX 1060s for use in a single system. So this is strictly for fun. We're really just looking at how it performs in the one use case I know of where a, a, a form of SLI will work, even though it's not SLI, it's MDA or LDA explicit. Uh, and so this test is just looking at that. It's a curiosity and it's within the realm of because we can. It doesn't mean you should go buy this. So with that out of the way, let's get to the benchmarks. You can find our RX 480 Crossfire benchmark, by the way, in another video on the channel for more information on that specific setup. For this benchmark, we'll be showing the RX 480, the RX 480 and Crossfire. You can find the full Crossfire benchmark in a separate video on the channel. We'll also be showing, of course, the 1060, 1060 in a form of multi-GPU, explicit multi-GPU with Ashes of the Singularity. We're running the Founders Edition and the MSI Gaming X versions of the 1060. We'll also have the 1080 or a form of it and the 1070 just for a reference point. So the testing methodology is the same as is defined in our GTX 1060 review that's already live. If you want the full in-depth review and methodology, you can hit the link below for that. Let's look at the benchmarks here. Ashes supports explicit multi-GPU, which has been coded by the developers to take advantage of DirectX 12 functionality. This would also allow cross-brand video cards to be paired, which we already did with the 970 and 390X. And for this test, we ran mostly at 1080p and 4K with high settings, though we've done some other tests as well. With both GTX 1060s, we're hitting 75.91 FPS in explicit multi-GPU. That's the average FPS at 1080p high as opposed to 46.98 FPS average on the Founders Edition GTX 1060 and 48 FPS on the MSI variant. From the MSI number, that's a scaling of roughly 1.5x. And it's not bad for a configuration that's never going to be used anywhere and certainly better than a lot of games have been for SLI in the past when they're post FX intensive anyway. But most interestingly, as you've likely already noticed, the multi-GPU setup actually outperforms the single GTX 1070s and even the GTX 1080 Gaming X also by MSI. This is pre-overclocked at 1847 megahertz and sat atop our bench results until now. At 4K, we moved from 35.4 FPS average on the MSI card and 34.1 FPS average on the FE card to 62.79 FPS average on the dual cards. That's pretty massive. Scaling is 1.77 X here, and that's enough to push us well into the range of pretty fluid gameplay. Again, we're pushing past the 1080 Gaming X and the Crossfire RX 480s with this setup. Frame times have also been reduced at 1080 high. We saw a reduction from 21.3 milliseconds average frame time latency to 13.17 milliseconds. 4K sees a dip from 29.3 milliseconds average frame time latency to 15.93 milliseconds. So I guess if you really wanted two GTX 1060s and you're the world's only ashes of the singularity player, then you could go this route. There's also theoretical advantages in some production applications that may support multi-GPU without SLI. I know some programs from Adobe will support that, though again, it becomes a question of, is it better to just buy a higher end card, which we haven't tested that for that specific production use case. And in terms of full testing, this isn't as in depth as our GTX 1060 review, so do go there for more on how these cards perform individually. This test does make me legitimately curious as to the potential performance of the GTX 1060s had SLI been supported, but I'll spoil things now and remind everyone that we've never once, at least in recent years, recommended SLI or Crossfire setups for anyone playing a lot of different types of games as the support is all over the map. For specific use cases and implementations where multi-GPU is well supported, it looks like the 1060s could have made a good choice that run cheaper than a 1080 even, but again, this is all theoretical at this point. Also, we didn't find the Crossfire RX 480s or the SLI GTX 1070s to be appealing for the vast majority of gaming. So this is pretty much in step with what we've seen before where there are a few specific use cases that really make good sense and then a lot of places where you'd actually be better off disabling the second card. So that puts us back to where we started. This was a test mostly just for fun and curiosity. Don't read too far into the results 
As always, Patreon link the post for the video if you want to help us out directly. You can hit the link in the description below for the full GTX 1060 review. The video is already on the channel. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.